Hi, this is Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com. Today we're starting part four in our series where we're using the Pololu 3Pi robot and using it as a development board for the ATmega 328P. Today we'll be looking at analog to digital conversion. Let's get started. All right, we're back in the data sheet for the uh, ATmega 328. And we can see that the analog to digital converter is capable of 10 bit resolution. Uh, it has some specs on its accuracy and linearity. The conversion time, so it can do up to 15,000 samples per second at the maximum resolution. And that's pretty good for, you know, if you're sampling some low quality audio, you could, you could actually do that. Uh, there are eight. Uh, eight channels that you can do conversion on uh, from the analog to digital converter. In addition to that, there are also a temperature sensor that you can sample as well as a 1.1 uh, volt reference voltage. And where that's going to be handy is, let's say you want to monitor, monitor the voltage of your battery and you happen to be running straight from the battery. In a low power situation like that, it can actually be helpful to have a voltage reference. Uh, I'm not sure what, what the accuracy of this is. I haven't uh, delved into the data sheet deep enough, but uh, what you can do is you measure the voltage of that 1.1 volt bandwidth, uh, you know, voltage regulator essentially is what it is and uh, as your voltage is dropping from the battery the red voltage from that will go up and doing a backwards calculation you can figure out what voltage your battery is at that's something that I do on uh, some of the things that I produce and ship on my own and it's a pretty handy little feature uh, in the particular processor that I'm using that uh, I think it's a 0.9 voltage on my uh, processor. It's not terribly accurate. It's not 0.9 volts. So what I do is I have a calibration routine that runs the very first time that I power that processor up. So when I program them, I program them at four volts. And I use that, I read, I read that uh, the voltage reference and store a calibration value in EEPROM or flash. And after that, I can get a pretty accurate uh, check on what my battery voltage is from thereafter. So if I know that my circuit starts failing at 2.8 volts, I can give myself a margin of safety and say, okay, tell the user you're not gonna work anymore at three. So even if there is some crazy thing going on where the temperature goes up and that voltage changes a little bit, you'll still be good. Anyway, back to the, uh, the analog to digital converter on the ATmega 328. There are two registers that you need to look at. One of them is the AD MUX. So what you do in the AD MUX is you can set what your reference voltage is. And this can be helpful if uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, I haven't really used this processor a whole lot. Uh, if you set it, uh, you can set it to be the voltage that the processor is powered from. You could also set it to a different voltage that is lower and you'd have that coming in on the uh, AVCC pin. And so let's say you had a signal that was one volt from, it went from zero to one volt. You could put a one volt signal on AVCC, if I'm understanding this correctly. And then you can measure uh, the, full, the full range, full 10 bits within one volt. Uh, you have the ADLAR, which is uh, I think left adjust red, yeah, result. And what this allows you to do is since this is a 10-bit uh, analog to digital conversion, what you're able to do is uh, you can use the, that full 10 bits and uh, the low 
low order, actually on, as you're looking at it, the low order bits uh, could be in the uh, result A, I think it is, and the high order bits would be in result B, but you'd only have two bits there if you're using the full 10 bits. Alternately, since this is an 8-bit processor, it's often easy to just use 8 bits of that 10 bits. And so what you can do is you can left adjust them so that the high 8 bits are over here and just the low 2 bits are over here. You're pretty much just getting rid of those guys using, the, using it as if it's an 8-bit result. Uh, so that's, that's what that bit's doing. And then you have the MUX or multiplexer. And this allows you to select which channel you have. So zero through seven allow you to check the um, actual output pin, uh, or input pins. And eight was the voltage or uh, the temperature sensor. And then uh, you can also select the 1.1 volt reference by uh, using 14 if you write 14 to the MUX. There's one other register and this is the analog to digital control status register and uh, you know I'll let you read the data sheet to get it but the, uh, the important ones are enable it and to start conversion and when you start the conversion uh, you set that bit high and then you watch that with your software and when that bit goes low again then you know the conversion is done. Uh, let's see if there's any you can set it so it interrupts when it's done I believe and auto triggering. I, I set uh, in my application so it just runs uh, when I request it and you can enable the interrupt so that it will actually interrupt. This is just a flag I guess. Anyway, and then the prescaler, this divides the uh, system clock. Uh, there is a certain frequency range that the analog to digital converter needs in order to get you your maximum of 10 bit precision. All right, let's look at all of this in a program. When I set up my analog to digital converter, uh, first, just to get this into a known state, I set both of those to zero. Uh, then uh, for the MUX, I'm setting it to channel 7, which on the 3Pi robot corresponds to the potentiometer that's micro tiny on the bottom. Uh, I'm setting it to left justify the result, so uh, I just want to use 8 bits, so I'm just using the high, the high register. And then I'm setting the uh, reference to AVCC which on the 3Pi is just tied to the same voltage that the uh, rest, the rest of the processor is running on. And I'm setting the prescaler to uh, divide by 128. And then I'm enabling the analog to digital converter. And uh, that line doesn't need to be there because I was mistakenly thinking that something else worked uh, that way, in a, in a certain way. Now when we're ready to read it, uh, again, just kind of ignore this part right here. Uh, I will clean this up before I go posting it. I can start the conversion by setting that bit that I talked about previously. And then I just sit here and I said as long as this bit is high, pretty much I'm anding this bit with uh, the analog to digital control uh, status register A. Uh, if that equals something other than zero, just hang out here for a little bit. Then when it is done, uh, ignore this bit again, and then I return the analog to digital uh, con converter high register. And that is the left adjusted or the, the high byte of the result. If I was looking at the full 10 bits, uh, I would need to, you know, maybe make this a long. Uh, I think it might be a long in, in, in this uh, version of C. And uh, I could 
read this and load it into that long and then return the long. Uh, but I couldn't have it left adjusted. All right, so what I've done is I've created a quick little program that loops forever. And what it does is it reads the analog to digital converter, clears the LCD, uh, prints a uh, integer on the first line just so I can see that it's running and not, not just hanging in my program. Uh, so this, this integer always is incrementing. Uh, oh no, I'm incorrect. <laughs> this uh, is uh, printing the result on the second line and then I'm moving to the first line and printing the incrementing thing. So let's go to our overhead camera and I'm turning on the robot now and right here right here is our analog to digital uh, result and this is the ever incrementing uh, value and let me just my finger just, just so you can see this here this is the potentiometer that I'm turning right here it's just barely bigger than the tip of the pencil but I'm just gonna put my finger on it and twist and as you can see as I twist that way it goes low and as I twist that way it goes high and I'm just not able to twist it all the way but it can go it can go full range so there you go. That's how to use analog to digital conversion on uh, an 18 mega 328p. I'm Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com, signing out.